Mm, yeah. I love my HBCU. Mm. And Bond? Bon? I love it, love it. Yeah. I love it, love it. Yeah. I love my HBCU. Yeah. And man, mm. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Mm, yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the HCCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they won a loss, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor. This is Dr. Khalil with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Well, wait a minute. Both of these guys are out on assignment. So you have clinical professor Drew in the house. What's going on, Dr. Khalil? You know, uh, I, I I did turn in that application for uh, for full professorship. Uh, ho hopefully human resources is uh, pushing the paperwork through. You know how this how we get sometimes uh, at HBCUs, paperwork gets lost. So. It is what it is, though. <laughs> that's that's the least of your worries. You got to go through all these faculty folks. They're gonna prove you the tenure, tenure track, full professor, voting <laughs> you up, voting you down. Oh yeah, it can get ugly and messy. Hey, hey it's no worse than my thesis uh, defense. So there you go. That's a, that's absolutely correct. But everybody, welcome to episode two fifty six of Inside the HBC Sports Lab Radio Show and Podcast. The show that's covering the sporting HBCU dash from all things HBCU sports. For institutions large and small, from the NCAA to the NAIA, we share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture, HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs and the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, along with my co-host, Mike Washington Charles Bishop. We're filming from our home studios and sending a signal live, KSOA's 1230 AM studios, with the Texas Radio Hall of Famer, multi-Hall of Famer, Ralph Cooper in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. As you say, I'm a little mobile and on the road, but we got to give you the show. And today's episode of Inside the HBCU Sports Lab is sponsored by THC Agency, LLC. That's THC Agency is a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics. As we get going, jump in here. Uh, again, let me ask you, how are you doing? Doc, I I am doing great. You know, uh, did we didn't do the uh, BCS and sports rap this past Sunday, so I feel like I've got so much to get off my chest about so many subjects. It's like trying to fit a size forty two waist into a size thirty eight pants today. Try it's just a super size <laughs> show, Doctor Cavill. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point, and it is so much and so different things. We'll see if we can get it all in for you. Well, let's start it off with the newest news, and then maybe we can go back to what we thought was the big news of the week and maybe get your thoughts and opine on that. But first, yeah. let's get into the big one, or the most recent one, I guess you would say, and that's VP AD Courtney Gauthier. Um, Effective immediately, and this was sent out yesterday, VP AD Courtney Gauthier is stepping down. He did have a quote in the release, and he is quoted as saying, my alignment core values are important to me, and there is no secret that we created a transformational student-athlete experience second to none that has elevated Florida agriculture mechanical, and that is university that will place them in a trajectory far beyond my tenure. I am incredibly proud of the work and the people that have done that work in such a short time. We have elevated the program and institution reputations to a level of new credibility, end quote. Obviously, in this perspective, we're talking about what your thoughts are from a media professional perspective, not necessarily um, your personal thoughts. Um, so from this perspective, let me ask you about your professional uh, thought process of this announcement and how it affects affect you going forward. From a professional point of view, you wonder what it was that got us to this point on the surface you see so so many so many things that uh ad gaucher had happened over his tenure uh and everyone let's, let's stop and pause when you think about athletic directors 
sometimes they get credit for stuff that was already in the works when they got there. And on the flip side, after they leave, they don't get credit for some of the things that they started the uh, ball rolling on after they leave. And, and Courtney Gauthier was no different than any other athletic director. There were certain things that were already in the works with uh, with Florida A&M University, such as the stadium renovations. Uh, you know, tur uh, just got the turf field prior to the stadium renovations. So he was the benefactor of those things that were already in, in place. Now, certain things happened on his watch. Uh, the renovations to the field house, uh, the move to the SWAC, and, and a few other things. There are other projects that are on the, on the table, on the shelf that he has had his hand in that you will not see at Florida A&M University for another two, three, I mean, maybe even five years down the line, and then he's had his part in that. So let's give him his fair share of the credit, but let's not give him all the highs and let's not give him all the lows because, as you know, anyone in that position, sometimes they, they are forced to put their name on decisions that they may not personally agree with, but you have to be a team player when you're in when you're in that position, and sometimes you may have to take one for the for the team, and and certain things out there. So, getting back to my point though, what led what led to this? Somewhere along the line, and the first side of it was when the vote of confidence came out. Anytime. You get a vote of confidence. <laughs> Why they call it a vote of confidence, I still have not figured it out. Because usually a vote of confidence is a vote of no confidence. It's usually a vote of we're not going to make a move yet. But it's to put you on alert. It's like when they call you down, we're going we're gonna to give you an action plan before we fire you. We want to fire yeah. you. Now, we're going to put you on the, this action plan first before we fire you. And it happens in, in corporate America every day, Dr. Kavir. No, no, you're absolutely correct. And we're talking about the faculty and tenure and going to HR and all this process. They have what you call during your first five years, six years when you're going up for tenure. They had a mid-review. So after three years, they review you and say, are you making it towards tenure? Or it might be one of those examples where it's like, man, you're not even close. So they be like, don't worry about it. We good. Keep, keep it moving. Keep We're it not moving. even going to let you get to the Consider career value. change. Yeah, <laughs> you need to go uh, check out something else or maybe go to another institution, try it over again. High right school, here, something. <laughs> yeah, it ain't, it's not working. It's not yeah. working. Yeah. So great point. Continue. Right. Uh, so, you know, that that's what you have. What, what was that? Or was it, a, was it one thing? Was it a series of things that that led to that? And that's weird. He was only on a three year contract, so he's two and a half years. Let's be real. It's time. It was time to start renegotiating the the a, a contract extension. That's on both sides. And having been in this position before, sometimes you could walk in the room and realize that. You may not be getting a new contract. They're finding they're, they're starting to find excuses to not give you a new contract. This is just my personal opinion. AD Gaucher may have realized I am not going to get a new contract. It makes no career sense for me to hang around in a place and become a lame duck athletic director where I know I'm not going to get a new contract. So it may be best if we end this relationship. Now, if we know that there's no way that we'll be able to come to terms, but now whether it was money, whether it was philosophy, whether it was whatever the case is, I, I, I think that that's where this came from. It was not, hey, you did wrong or something like that. I think it was the fact that everyone realized there was not going to be an extension. And we see it in coaching all the time. You realize it's not going to be an extension. So let me go find me another job or I, I might I might as well go ahead and uh, be released now so I can pursue other things because me sitting around as a lame duck is going to hamper me more than it's going to help me. Yeah, an example of that is in football just last year with uh, Prairie and A&M's head coach, Eric Dooley. Um, 
his contract went up and they literally waited to the end and he outperformed the contract that last year in terms of making it to the championship game. But the benefit of for him in this case is that the Southern job and the Grambling job that both were interested in him came open and yeah, they made runs at him. Yeah, exactly. So these things are very interesting when you look at them from a business perspective in regards to how um, you get into a position where timing is everything in regards to that. So that's one of the things I wanted to put it out more from a business perspective. What are some things of how to consider when these things go forward about how do you look at them? Um, most of the other networks and uh, writers and blogs have done you know, a great job in terms of providing their opinions on what went right or what went wrong or who's to blame in this. I wanted to take, as we do it, a very business uh, look at these things in terms of how we can expect and see them going forward and all those kind of things. Uh, with that being said, let's get into um, uh, the framework of just that from a business perspective of uh, looking at contracts extensions in terms of, I thought it was a great example when you said, usually you start to enter these a year into your, per, um, before your last year. At least, six, uh, at least six months prior to the expiration. Yes. Minimum. Yes. Because these things are intriguing because they have to go to multiple layers too. So this right. is not something that your president can sign off. This has to be signed off from your board. And the board is the first, yeah, legal goes through that process. They make sure the legal components and they're usually getting uh, perspectives from the president in regards to what things they want to do. And obviously, oftentimes people on the board are giving their general framework. But it's important for people to understand from a board, they're only supposed to do watching from a governance st structure. They're not really uh, supposed to get into daily operations. If they do, you start to get in trouble with SAC COC. Uh, in terms of that delineation between the board and the president and the organization in terms of day to day operation, which right. the president is responsible for. So right. those are some things I wanted to clear up for folks that may or may not be aware of that in terms of this situation or in general, looking at contracts extensions when it comes up for your coach and or football. We just seen this in terms of Texas Southern University with basketball where the coach got an extension uh, from that standpoint and when did that negotiate start it started off a while uh, ago but it never uh, got to the board level in fact they were waiting for certain things and while it was released that they're intended and it's likely that it will happen it hasn't hit the board it won't go until the official ratification until the next board meeting for texas southern university which is this upcoming week so that's another perspective to see that let's right. take a quick break and okay. we'll get back in the second component um, and allow you to finish off some thoughts, and then we can start talking about some other frameworks and things that I'm sure that you want to make sure that you get a chance to uh, provide a perspective on. And again, we're going to take you down a unique perspective. We really took you to class on Tuesday. We're going to stay on that frame and really look at these things from a business perspective to give you more information in regards to things you may or may not be considering uh, when listening to other folks giving you some frameworks of uh, what is taking place in the industry. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this break. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Shout out to all the lab listeners out there. You know, I usually give you a uh, name, a recognition. Uh, again, I'm on the move. So stick with us uh, as we make this work. We'll be right back after this first break. No. No. Come on, him. Ooh, I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. 
Now you can live in Texas and not have a good red meat blend. Texas Cowboy Dust is designed for steak and other red meats. It's out to be my most popular spice blend, made with onions, peppers, ground mushrooms, pink salt, and other spices. Texas Cowboy Dust also goes great with chicken, pork, vegetables, and has a restaurant quality sheen to gravies and sauces. It's like a loot machine. Vanilla smoked sea salt seasoning is for seafood. The tarragon and fennel bring out the natural sweetness in seafood. I also use it in rice dishes, on yams, asparagus, blueberry pancakes, and believe it or not, chocolate chip cookies. Vanilla smoked sea salt adds a salty and savory component to sweet dishes that create a symphony for the tongue. Press the analytic data with your hip hop If you know them like I know them They gon' tell you if your team If they want a lot left And who the ball, who the ball So listen to Professor Yes sir, yes sir And pay attention Cause he gon' teach this is Dr. Bill with Inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. They're both on assignment, so we have clinical professor Drew as we break it down. I know there was uh, one final thought that you wanted to tie in in terms of how extenuating those circumstances are in a lot of cases. Another reason that you want to start this uh, process early, let's take a look at the quote-unquote employee side. In this instance, uh, A.D. Gaucher but it could be a uh, a coach or, it, or anyone else. He has his own people, just like the university has their people where they have to take it to legal and the accounting department and human resources and the president and ultimately the board in order to get signed off on. He, he has, he should have his own lawyer, his own attorney, reviewing the, uh, the contract to make sure that it uh, makes legal sense to him. He should have some type of financial advisor, accountant, bookkeeper to make sure that it makes uh, fiscal sense to him. Uh, that person's going to, going to have a, a spouse. Usually I don't care what, I don't care what your attorney, what your lawyer say. If your husband or wife does not, do not like, the contract, I, I was just about to say, go you gonna have your, you're going to have your significant other and they're going to have more exactly. say than anybody. They're going to have the, the ultimate say because, <laughs> I, I, I mean, let, let's be real. How many times have I know coaches personally that have gotten offers to go coach somewhere and husband or wife says, I'm not moving with you to XYZ City. XYZ City. So I don't care how good the contract is. If mama don't want to go or daddy don't want to go and you got you got kids, there, there are things on a personal level that you have to deal with when making this decision. Is this the place where I want to make my home for the next three to five years if that's the length of the contract? So Absolutely. Th there, there are, those are things that you have to think on the personal level in addition to what we're thinking about on the university level. Good points. Good points. Uh, let's move on. Some some of the lab listeners joined us. You want to shout out anybody over there? Particularly? Yeah, since, since Dr. Gavir doesn't have his uh, device readily available, I'll do the uh, lab listeners. Thanks for the promotion, Doc. I get to call out all the names today. <laughs> got, got Ricky Burton uh, watching the Jeep Boom Holly in my seat early. Michael Ford, T, T Nicole Price, Mary Allen, uh, Chad Cooper, always along on here. Tony Franklin, Jay Back. Stephen Gaither says, anything happening in Tallahassee? No, nah, just another day on the highest of seven hills, uh, Stephen <laughs> A. Gaither. But, but Steve, make sure you watch the full, the whole show. We got another announcement coming that, that I, I guarantee you, you're going to want to put on your platform. Uh, Chuck Hunt, always, always in the house. Keith Martin. Uh, Willie Alex Hines, HBCU Pro Sports member. Jay J Mac, uh, just a few of those uh, who are tuning in with us here on the uh, inside the HBCU Sports Lab, Dr. Kavir. Yeah, in fact, let's barely leave. Let's go ahead and get that information out uh, that we want to release significant announcement of uh, things going forward. Go ahead and tell us what you got for us. What's on your mind? What's some good news out there that you want to discuss? All right. Uh, if, if our producer has the, uh, the, lo the logo ready. That, that that's a hint to him. <laughs> Hopefully, he's paying uh, attention. 
he's always paying attention. You know, <laughs> <in my unit. laughs> he's going to be a little sweet. Anyway, uh, Ty- it, it was announced uh, just before we got on the air that Tyson Foods is the first ever title sponsor of the Black College World Series. And Tyson Foods commits to a three-year partnership in support of HBCU students. This comes from Springdale, Arkansas. This was released today, uh, approximately around 6 p.m. today, to support athletes at historically black colleges and universities, HBCUs. Tyson Food announced that it will be the title sponsor of the Black College World Series in each of the next three years. The Tyson Foods Black College World Series for 2022 will be played from May 11th through 15th at Riverwalk Stadium in Montgomery, Alabama, and will involve eight HBCU baseball teams. The top teams from the NCAA Division II bracket tournament bracket in the tournament will face off against the top two teams from the NAIA bracket to determine the champion. And this press release, this is just hot off of the press. Uh, It goes on to say, as the official hot dog of summer, Ballpark, one of the the Tyson Uh, Foods portfolio brands, is joining Tyson Foods in the three-year sponsorship with the Black College World Series. Last, most important note, this tournament will be streamed online right here on the Black College Sports Network. So... That, that's, that's big, big news. That's, that is that, big that's news. Humongous. We came together, and one of the things that we were committed to is making this work. And one of the things that was necessary to be able to really take uh, this World Series to the next level was to get the title sponsor. Yeah. And those involved, I want to tip my cap for all those who are involved uh, with the Black College World Series, very uh, diverse group of individuals, dedicating when meeting at least weekly if not more time and that's just in terms of the group and that's not the side uh conversations telephone calls to make sure things are moving forward and this is the first step in really setting the legacy of it moving forward credits to uh, all those individuals i would call out some names but i'd be remiss if i left out a couple of them um and so we'll do that at a later time to make sure we name all of those involved Uh, we've heard it very early in terms of um, the Black College World Series. Yeah. It's right upon us, and I'm yeah. excited about it and look forward to uh, continued years of success. Yeah. Uh, these teams, as y'all do the weekly show, that's only only a, you know, a walk to the World Series, if you would. Uh, they can see it on Wednesdays, uh, traditionally, uh, talking about where teams are and how they're looking in terms of the field uh, for the Black College World Series. Well, number one, uh, get yourself some credit, Doc. Uh, when you were called upon and asked to serve as an advisor to the board, you accepted the call. So I want to give you, uh, Thank you. Uh, uh, s- some credit uh, for that foresight and uh, le- le- helping us lead the conversations from a academic and business uh, perspective because we all have our different perspectives and you bring it, just like we all do, you bring a unique perspective to the uh to the, to the conversations, number one. Number two, as an executive board member, I, I am proud that seeing a plan come together, that's the, uh, that's, that's the thing, seeing a plan come together. Uh, we, we've been talking about this as the inaugural event last year in Montgomery, and we've been working hard. We've been conversations, phones. Uh, sometimes the conversations amongst ourselves are not friendly conversations, but ultimately, it's it's for the, it's for the common good, and we're coming uh, we're coming together. And this event is going to be huge. And with the sponsorship by Tyson and Ballpark uh, Ballpark Franks, it is going to be a, uh, a a tremendous event. It's going to give the the support that the student athletes need, so they have a first-class event. Yes, it's important for the fans to be in a first-class facility, which they are, at a first-class event. But the most important thing, when it's all said and done, is make sure the student-athletes are taken care of while they are away from home and away from their home universities. Also, full, also full disclosure, our uh, executive director and CEO, Roy Evans, is also a member of the uh, executive committee for this uh, event. 
Yeah, he has his hands in a lot of pots. Uh, you all will be surprised at how much he makes gold to make sure that particular HBCU fans can uh, get a literally eye view of what's going on in the HBCU landscape. Credit to Roy. Uh, he's been doing this uh, for many years, and you see in a lot of ways the fruit of his labors coming to the forefront and is really one of the big pillars out there in making things work including what we're able to do with our fans from the Black College Sports Network, BCSN. So, again, yeah. make sure you download the app, my JBN, my BCSN. Make sure you go to YouTube, like, subscribe. Facebook, we always like those likes and shares, uh, but YouTube is really a good place for you to make sure that you subscribe as well um, so we can get the full uh, attendance. I wanted, yeah. before we go into this um, next break and come on the second half, and really talk a little bit more about uh, some uh, other news and your thoughts on some things and then get into some baseball talk as we get prepared for the second half of the SWAC, uh, particularly in baseball, moving into further deeper in the second half of softball as well. Gulf Coast Athletic Conference announces partnership with Schedule Opt. The Gulf Coast Athletic Conference announced a partnership with Schedule Opt, Melbourne, Victoria-based company that will handle all league scheduling for each of the GCAC championship sports in volleyball, men's and women's basketball, and the future sports added to the league roster. Beginning with the 2022-23 athletic season, Schedule Op uh, and their web-based application that streamlines the scheduling process will allow conferences to ensure a competitive and balanced structure to the league scheduling move, for which includes the addition, as we talked about before, Suno, that's Southern University of New Orleans, Oakwood University, and Wiley College. Um, obviously, this is a quote from the now GCA commissioner, as recently we talked about, that's Kiki Baker Barnes, quote, we're excited to partner with the in with a leader in scheduling and a company game came to us highly recommended from fellow conferences who have seen incredible success using their product, end quote. Quote, also talking about our league institutions will immediately see the benefits of their product as we begin the process of scheduling matches, games for the upcoming year. Big news coming out of the GCAC is they continue to grow and get bigger. You know, we're talking about conference uh, churning and some member institutions losing institutions or at least looks like they're scheduled maybe to lose more institutions. Got to give a shout out to GCAC. They're growing and churning in a more uh, positive direction, I guess you would say, when they're adding institutions. So uh, make sure that we give some love to GCAC. As oftentimes, we cover a lot of their work right here on BCSN and plan to do more partnerships with them. With that being said, let's get into our first half of the show break. We'll come back on the other half and get some more thoughts. I'm sure there's some thoughts you might want to talk about. Howard University and CAA Colonial. So, something uh, happening at Howard? That's what I'm I thought. Hearing. I thought FAMU was the only place that had news going on uh, in HBCU yeah, school. Yeah, just a little bit. But the, the unique <laughs> thing about FAMU is, at least it was released officially from the university. In terms of Howard, we haven't really heard anything from Howard. Uh, we have some breaking news in regards to what might likely be happening. So that's a whole different perspective, and we'll keep that in consideration as well. But we'll tune back in right after the break, and then we might even talk a little bit about the swag. With that being said, stick with us. We'll be right back after this quick break. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Supermarket sushi, really? No. Wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? <laughs> oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> never not working. Never not working. Never ever not working. Are you serious? Never not working. Dandruff protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. 
Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk, chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. Full, but we Mango's Caribbean Restaurant. Open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. So we've got a good thing going. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404 698-3992 or log on to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant.com for instant coupons. Text M A N G O S to 313131. Tell your mama hungry, papa hungry, brother hungry. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant. Authentic Caribbean cuisine. Open up the door. Tell your mama hungry. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website www.slowburnwaco.com That's www.slowburnwaco.com Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yeah. Yep. So this is Doctor Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. You know, had to put on the jacket as we go to class, the second half of the lecture. With that being said. Mike Washington, Charles Bishop out on assignment, so we have none other than clinical Professor Drew. With that being said, we went out of the break talking a little bit about the fact that there was some news coming out of HBCU game day that suggests all has been said, essentially, that Howard will be accepting an invitation from the Colonial Athletic Association to leave the MEAC uh, and join the CAA. What are your thoughts in terms of this move, um, whether it's regarding Howard in the move or MEAC or a little bit of both? What are your thoughts on that? This, this is a tough one, Doc. Uh, I hate to see the fact that Howard may be moving to the, uh, to the CAA. But you and I have been around this game long enough to know that where there's smoke, there's fire, Doc. And this move will appear to happen, if not if not sooner, soon. <laughs> so uh, this 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 is a tough one to uh, to kind of swallow and uh, and, and deal makes, with. What makes it so tough for you, uh, from your perspective? What are some of the emotions that you're going through when you heard the news that this may be the case? All right, that's likely the case. Well, let's think about this. This is probably something Howard has wanted to do for a little while. But Howard's president was the president of the count the council president for the BIAC. Obviously, that is mm. bad aesthetics to make a move like that while you are <laughs> the point. leader of the other presidents. He is, he no longer serves in that position. So now he can make this move with a little more freedom, not as much backlash from some of the other people. Because when it's all said and done, this is a, uh, uh, I hate to say dog eat dog, but it, you have to look out for your yeah. institution first, conference second, HBCU, the, the whole diaspora HBCUs third. No matter how it leaves, there's no likely easy replacement for Howard uh, in, in the BIAC conference. That means one of two things for the BIAC. Either we lose the tradition of an all-black Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference and, and have to admit non-HBCUs into the, into the BIAC conference, or you have to wait until a Division II has the wherewithal to move up to Division One. If you wait, can the BX survive 
the three to five years that it will take for Virginia State or, or Bowie State or something somewhere along those lines to move up to the Division One. I'm afraid if they decide to take that route, some of these other teams will start making will start making moves. If you start looking at the whole FCS landscape, there are some conferences out there that are in similar situations, and it may be best served if the BAC uh, merges with those with those conferences, and you have a basically an HBCU division and a non HBCU division, whatever you title it. But that's essentially what it what it would be. And one, uh, a couple other things, you've got that Northeast Corridor with Howard, Norfolk, and all those up in there, D.C., Virginia, Maryland. And we've really got these two outliers here, Central and South Carolina State. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking one of those two may be the next just because of geography to, to consider making a move. South Carolina State has their, a whole other set of problems that they're dealing with outside of what's happening in the BA. Uh, with, with the different uh, suits. They just got over some financial issues at South Carolina State, and they still aren't as stable as some other schools are in, in, the, in the conference. Central, they're kind of an outlier right there. What, geographically, where, where does Central fit in, into the future of them yet? Just some things I want to throw out there to you. Yes, um, and more from a business perspective again, some of the things that you want to consider that people may not realize is the NCA bylaw rules and how they affect the decision about that. Usually, Will, you're very versed on the fact that you need a minimum of six teams to get the automatic bid to tournament. Slightly different for the basketball tournament where there's a guideline that actually says that you need um, essentially eight teams at a minimum because you got to play double round robin, meaning home and away, and you got to play a minimum of 14 conference games. Well, if you go below eight, um, because that means you'll play seven other teams, you play them home and away, that's 14. So if you go below eight teams, you get to seven, play around Robin, that's only 12 games uh, if you're playing home and away. Um, so you're below that threshold. So these are some of the uh, things that you need to consider uh, about these moves and why you may be hearing some things about Chicago State, uh, about them moving forward and moving into divisions of how you would traditionally look at expansion regionally, how that decision by Howard may change that dichotomy of how the MEAC decides to move forward. So those are some things that I wanted uh, people to consider about that. I want to drop a little bit, just some general news out there for folks, a uh, Carolina HBCU All-Star Basketball game coming out of HBCU Sports, the inaugural Carla Carolina HBCU All-Star Basketball game. Interesting, you get all these basketball All-Star games coming up. You also have one out of Ohio. Um, it will tip off this Saturday in Greensboro Coliseum. It's the first year event will feature student athletes from HBCUs across both the North and South Carolina. This week will celebrate history of HBCU campuses in the Carolinas with a host of partners from right here in the Triad champion, a division of Haynes brands headquartered in Winston-Salem, along with Pepsi bottling ventures are both supporting this weekend's event and be on the site for a community tailgate and kick off All-Star Saturday at 10 a.m. in the Coliseum parking lot. So good information in terms of HBCU All-Star. We've seen that picking up lately with multiple All-Star games. Uh, anytime you get a chance to have um, your college athletes get an opportunity to be celebrated, I think it's a good thing. And you certainly are getting the support from corporations. The other big news in a lot of ways is a hiring, you know, Alabama A&M hires head coach with Olympic and NBA resume, as well as international experience for Alabama A&M Athletics. Alabama A&M Director of Athletics Brian Hicks has announced the hiring of Olympic and former National Basketball Association uh, coach Otis Hewley Jr. as the Bulldogs head men's basketball coach. That was announced on Mo Monday, April the 18th. So that's going to be fascinating as you have these coaches moving around in the SWAC extensions. Um, so the SWAC is really um, – you're going to be intriguing again in terms of the basketball season, particularly on the men's side. You had some changes on the women's side as well. So basketball sport that may not be the top focus of the conference uh, should be interesting moving forward in terms of that. 
I wanted to get your thoughts before we get in this last break and do get some knowledge on these uh, baseball games this weekend. The other uh, dialogue uh, that a lot of people had regarding this week uh, was in terms of the SWAC uh, in regards to litigation that's out there. Did you have any general thoughts on that? It's been talked about quite a bit, but I did want to give you a platform to see if you want to share anything. Obviously, you know, uh, excuse me, lost lost my microphone there for a second. Uh, Knowing some things uh, that that I can't share on on this platform uh, for for inside information, what it may come down to, and, and we've seen this with certain lawsuits and things like that. This may be a situation, Doc, where both sides are right in their thinking because of conflicting lines and bylaws within within the Constitution of, of the SWAC or how the Constitution has been interpreted. A lot of times, rules are made, uh, a bylaw may have been written 20 years ago. You write a new bylaw last year, problem is sometimes we forget to go back and rescind the bylaw that was written 20 years ago so depending on what version of you looking you you write 20 years ago you're right to you're right last year problem is they say two different things and when you when you make the new rule you forget to rescind the old rule which put those two rules directly in conflict with each other and when that happens somewhere sooner or later down the line that issue is going to come up where those two things co- conflict. And for me on the outside looking in, this may be the case in this situation where what Urban Edge Network is saying is true. What the SWAC is saying is true. Problem is, they're in, they are actually in conflict with each other. And unfortunately, it may come down to uh, litigation or arbitrator or mediator to actually decide how this goes forward. Now, let's take let's take a positive out, out of all this litigation. Pre-pandemic, Dr. Cavill, it seemed like no one cared about HBCU media <laughs> rights. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, everybody is fighting over who controls HBCU media rights, how much we get paid, where we putting it at, and everything like that. Although this lawsuit is not a good thing, it really shows how far we've come over the last two to three years. The fact that we are fighting over this genre, this product. Well, nobody fighting over this in 2018. No, do what you want to do. Look, I want you, I need you to make some money because you go have you got some bills to pay. Same thing on the swag side. Now everybody's fighting over th- their piece of the pie. It, it, it's good in that sense that we have that much respect in the, in the media and we can command that type of money. Now, the, the thing is, we've just got to figure out how to divide it up properly and let, let everybody be happy. Great point. I will share this. Though. I think one thing they want to be clear on is because I think in some spaces, We've talked about the Constitution, and I think some of that is because it's so new, um, and some people wanted to get that information out there. But I think it's also important for folks that have had a chance to get a look at the actual lawsuit in that perspective versus an email that was sent to presidents that may have a perspective in sharing them some guidelines. The, The lawsuit that is out there or prescribed to be out there is specifically not talking about media rights. It's talking about representation, who has the right to represent somebody. Correct. And I think that's uh, uh, something that needs to be clear. If you are a conference, um, nobody can represent the conference unless the conference says that you can represent. You can't arbitrarily say that I'm representing a institution in the conference and therefore I'm representing the conference. It doesn't work like that. Those are two separate entities. So you may be able to represent an institution within the conference, but that doesn't give you rights to say that you represent the conference. Right. Um, and so I think that's something that's extremely important that people need to consider that those are two separate um, contractual rights that you'd have to get to do that. And that hadn't been out there. 
one thing that also when you get into some of these rights and we did a long breakdown of exclusive rights, primary rights, secondary rights, church church rights, rights yes. right? One of the things that's important while a company can own your exclusionary rights, that doesn't mean that you can't go back to that company and say, hey, we want to renegotiate how much of those exclusionary rights that you have. And so that company, while they might have in the contract that you have exclusionary rights, they can opt back in and say, well, we're going to give you your secondary rights. And that allows you to potentially go on the market as the organization now and um, resell those rights if you obtain them back. So those are some things that people may not be privy to uh, that are something that people need to consider. Let's take our last break. We'll come back and talk about the baseball games of the week. Give you an update to the polls. The polls were released this week, week number four. That's the Block College 9 top 10. We'll give you some of the top programs. You can actually go to the website, blackcollege9.com, to get the entire top 10 from, as they refer to the small division of small school polls, as well as the large school polls. We call it the major division and mid-major division. Stick with us after this break. We're into our last segment. We'll give you that seventh inning strict stretch see if we need to go to the bullpen and call it an evening stick with us we'll be right back after this last break Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness it's hard for your family to remember they can use less sweet pillows of softness this is soft holy Charmin oh, excuse me roll it back everybody sorry Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll it back, everybody. <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? Q-Time is our classic Atlanta soul food restaurant located in the historic West End. Q-Time Soul Food is a family business started by Fred and Christine Crenshaw. Come on in, relax, and sink your chops into our tantalizing, mouth-watering, distinctive soul food with a twist, the Q-Time way. 1120 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard, or call your order in at 404-758-2881. Do you miss your mama's cooking? Then come on down to Q-Time, an Urban Passport member. For 200 years, Montgomery, Alabama has been making history by people who had the courage to stand up for change. Today, this riverfront city has been reborn, embracing the past and looking forward to the future. From the National Memorial for Peace and Justice to the stage of the Alabama Shakespeare Festival, this is where history was and is made. We are proud to call Montgomery home, and together, we can be the change. The top HBCU programs in the nation come to Montgomery, Alabama's Riverwalk Stadium this May 11th through 14th for the Black College World Series. The best Black College baseball teams in the NCAA Division II and the NAIA will battle for Black Baseball's ultimate pride. Games will be streamed live at www.mybcsn.net. Tickets are available now online at www.blackcollegechampionships.com. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot left, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention. This is Dr. Gaville with Inside HBC Sports Lab with clinical prof professor Drew. As I promised, gonna give you a little update about the small school division, large school division. We got some changes at the top this week for the small school division. For a long time, you've seen Savannah at the top. They had a tough weekend series. Edward Waters, that is making a move to Division Two, made a statement in baseball at least. And not only did they come away beating Savannah State, they brought out the brooms. They swept Savannah State. Three-game series, which dropped Savannah State week, last two-week series to four and three which means that sweep over the weekend gave them their only three losses. Top five teams, Payne College, NCCA. They were three and six this past two weeks. Ranked, previous rank three, they dropped to the fifth spot. They're 16 and 11 at number four, Florida Memorial. Out of the Sun Conference, 21 and 16. Previous rank four, so they stay right there. They were four and one over the last two weeks. Previous rank five, so they do move up a spot, bringing us to number three. Miles College out of the SIEC. We'll hear a lot about the SIEC. They're three and three over the last couple of weeks. Uh, previous rank four, so they still move up a spot. They're 21 and 15. 
At number two, Savannah State. Yes, yeah, Savannah State drops from the number one spot. Out of the SIC, they were four and three, as I said. Previously ranked one. They're 28 and nine. They had that sweep against Edward Waters, so they dropped out of the number one spot. So who's number one this week? Albany State, University of SIC, six and one. Previously ranked two, 24 and eight. Going to you, Professor Drew. What are your thoughts on this? This one and two switching at the top. Why is that so big heading into this weekend? Why is that so big? Because the SIAC title will be on the line this oh. weekend. Savannah State goes into this, this weekend 22 and one in the SIAC. They face Albany State in a head to head matchup. Wow. Albany State 20 and three in the SIAC. Real simple man. If Albany State should sweep Savannah State, Albany State will be in first place next week. Savannah State has to take at least one game to remain in first place. And let's keep this in mind. In regardless of what happens this weekend, that there is still one additional weekend series in the in the, oh. S, in the SIAC. So with that being said, that that final weekend series in the SIAC will be I'm, I'm going to it right now. Uh, that is going to be. Why are you doing that? Albany that State. Albany, okay, let me, let me take that back. Albany State takes on Ever Waters next weekend, Ooh. which does not count. Count. That's right. In, in the SIAC standings, where Savannah State takes on Benedict. Let's be real. Savannah State should sweep Benedict. Yes. yes. So. It's, it is imperative that Albany State sweeps this series to take control of the SIAC. And get Man, great, seed. great information, great report there in terms of what's going on in SIAC baseball. This is if you had scheduler makers, they got this one right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> in terms of uh, getting this as the last two weeks of the season matchup, let's go into the large school division. We'll talk a little bit about the top five there as this was released. Um, not changes at the top, but some changes throughout the top five. Again, you can go see the top ten of both the small and the large school polls at blackcollege9.com. Top five programs. Florida a &M, the Rattlers, out of the swag. Uh, four and four over the last couple of weeks, playing some good baseball. Uh, but 16 to 21 on the season, previous rank five, so they stay right there. And number four, you have Jackson State out of the swag. They're hot. Five and three, uh, including wins over FAMU, taking two out of three. Previous rank six, so they jumped up a couple of spots, including over FAMU, if you would, because of taking two out of three from it. They're 18 and eight on the season. Got a big series coming up this weekend to see if they can continue to have things going. I believe they line up against uh, Alabama State at the top of the SWAC division. We'll see where they are in the poll. Bringing us number three, another SWAC team, man. All these swag programs, Bethune, Cookman, three and four. Previous rank two, so they do drop a spot over the last couple of weeks. They're 16 and 19 uh, playing in terms of the baseball season. At number two, this team had one of the largest drops, certainly one of the biggest weekends. They sweep Southern. They go eight and two over the last couple of weeks, playing some really good baseball. A couple of midweek wins uh, has capped off of what they've been able to do over that time. And now they come out with the winning record 21 to 17, including taking the first half of the baseball poll. They had beat everybody in terms of the other five teams in the division, two out of three, uh, but had not had a sweep like everybody else. They take on the previous number one top team out of the Western division, which was Southern. The game was supposed to be in Baton Rouge on the bluff. Except for some water and expected rain, they moved it and decided to play it in Prairie View. So that means later in the season, Prairie View have to go there. The good thing about Southern, they closed. They had their last three games at home. So uh, you're going to want to stretch out if you're the top teams in that division because you got to imagine that Southern's going to play really tough at home and get a chance to make a statement. But for now, Prairie View's getting it done as their number two, meaning the number one team continues to be Alabama State and the SWAC, five and one over the last couple of weeks. Staying at number one, 20 and 14. 
as they continue to get it done. Those are the top five teams in the large division poll. Go to you, Professor Drew. What are your thoughts on the large division poll rankings in terms of the top five team and some of the games to watch this week? Before you answer that, just to give you an update, in terms of the baseball side, you have Arkansas Pine Bluff at Prairie View, Mississippi Valley at Bethune-Cookman, Alabama A&M at FAMU, Southern at Texas Southern, Alcorn State at Gramlin, Alabama State at Jackson State. To give you these uh, six games over the three-game series Friday, Saturday, and Sunday should be fascinating in terms of what's going on there. Let me give softball some love, at least in the swag here. Texas Southern at Arkansas Pine Bluff, Bethune-Cookman at Alabama State, Southern at Gramlin State, Alabama A&M at Jackson State, Prairie View at Alcorn State, Florida A&M at Mississippi Valley. In terms of baseball in the MEAC, you have Maryland Eastern Shore over Norfolk State, Coppin State over Delaware State. Um, in uh, MEAC in the softball, you had some potential games that I hate were canceled and postponed. You had, during the midweek games, you had Alabama State going to take over South Carolina State in a swack MEAC matchup. Then you had a big South over MEAC rivalry in terms of North Carolina a and and North Carolina Central. That game was in a neutral site in Gary, North Car- carried North Carolina, but it was postponed. You did get in this rivalry, uh, MEAC against Big South, Norfolk State and Hampton in terms of that game, um, getting it done there. And you also had Alabama A&M taking over Tennessee State. Alabama A&M got that victory there. But in terms of me at softball, you have Maryland East Shore at Howard, Morgan State at South Carolina State, Hobbin State at North Carolina Central, and Delaware State at Norfolk State. In terms of the big matchups this weekend, what has you excited? Or in terms of the top five poll rankings, what are your thoughts? Well, let's start off, let's start off with the big act. Uh, let's give them some love because the polls, we are not giving them any love because they uh, – the BX been mediocre uh, this year when it comes when it comes to baseball. Uh, just try to be brutally brutally honest. But when you look at the schedule, Maryland Eastern Shore, Norfolk, Norfolk, two games behind Maryland Eastern Shore in the schedule. One or two things is going to happen. Maryland Eastern Norfolk will play their way back into the race, or Norfolk will become just a non-factor for the remainder of the season. Norfolk has to take three out of four against Maryland Eastern Shore to even be a factor, even in a four-team BAC. And let's be real. Coppin and Delaware are going to split 2-2. They'll still be tied for first place. They're both 11-9 now. They'll be 13-11. Both teams will be 13-11 after this weekend. <laughs> There won't be any separation on that side. So let's switch over to the other conference where we got where we got some uh got a little, little bit of action. Got some looks. It looks like baseball standings. Games on both sides. I'm gonna pick one in one series in the east, one series in the west, and I'm really intrigued about Texas Southern Southern is mm. the series that I'm intrigued about in the uh, on the west side, like especially that. especially when you consider where Texas Southern was the first time that these two teams played. Yes, we know they beat the two statistically worst teams in the uh, SWAC at that point in time to get off to that fast start. So let's see if Texas Southern can go back and get the revenge against Southern this weekend. Jackson State, Alabama State. Jackson State got has got, got off to probably the slowest start that I have seen Jackson State baseball get off to in probably 10 years, Dr. Cavill. Uh, so Jackson State's on the road. They took, I believe, two out of three against FAMU last weekend. I, that's hard to come out of my mouth, but it's the truth. Uh, Alabama State has, ha, has, has been hot, but Alabama State's been known to give up some runs. Jackson State still has a good offensive team. The pitching is what has let, let Jackson State down. So let's see if Jackson State bats can get hot against Alabama State. If so... Once again, we can see shakeups on the east side of the of the squack race. We we know the four teams that are in on the east. It's just what order they will finish. Great point. And so with that, let me get a standings before we close out here uh, to show exactly what you're talking about in terms of some of these matchups and why they have you excited or intrigued about it. Out of the SWAC, uh, top four teams I'll give you out of each division, give you top four in terms of the MEAC. Because there's only four. Um, 
and then give you the top four in terms of MEAC softball as well as the SWAC softball. In terms of baseball, top four teams east, um, Alabama State at the top, 12 and 2, Bethune Cookman at 10 and 5, along with FAMU, which makes those matchups, as you said. Jackson State has played some good basketball, basketball uh, baseball of late, I should say, at 6 and 9, and pulling away from the bottom teams as they were previously on the bottom. So that makes that series against Alabama State, which is always electrifying, exciting. And it's in Jackson to see if they can make uh, some move uh, in that. In the West, you have Prairie View at 11 and 4, Grandman at 10 and 5, Southern at 9 and 6. Texas Southern is seven and eight, so you're right. In a dog fight there, Arkansas Pine Bluff got a win, so they're just two games behind uh, in the win column against Texas Southern. So you're right. That Southern and Texas Southern matchup becomes big this weekend in a lot of ways. Miak, you talked about this. Everybody's crowded up. May have got a little distance from Norfolk State, but Delaware State and Cotton State sitting at ten and nine, but Maryland East Shore is one game behind at ten and ten. Um, Norfolk State is at eight and twelve. In terms of SWAC. Softball standings, top four teams, Bethune Cookman at 12 and 6, Jackson State at 9 and 7, FAMU at 10 and 8, and Alabama State at 8 and 8. In the West, just like Bethune Cookman has seemed to be running away to some degree, just a game away from uh, Jackson State. So they're still in the hunt. But Texas Southern is far away from the second team, which is Prairie View at 11 and 7. Texas Southern's 15 and 3. Alcorn State and Southern are 8 and 7 and 8 and 10, respectively, in that division race. Top four teams in the softball. For the MEAC, Norfolk State at 12 and 3, along with Morgan State at 12 and 3. Howard is at 11 and 3. Maryland Eastern Shore is 10 and 5. They were at the top of the division, but they've hit a slid, slide downward, if you would, as they have lost the last five. Um, in terms of the independence, been a struggle. Hampton has picked up a couple of wins, but they lost their last game. They're at 6 and 12. North Carolina AT has struggled all season at 13 and 15 in terms of softball. They're at 7 and 10, respectively, of 10 field conference in softball out of the Big South. In terms of uh, Tennessee State, they're number 10 in the OVC, sitting at 3 and 14, struggling as well. Uh, in terms of that, they lost four straight games. Um, in terms of baseball, you have also have North Carolina A&T, the 11th team of 11th conference race in baseball. They sit at just 1 and 11 in the conference race, 12 and 22 at home. Uh, just about all their wins, my understanding, 11 of them have been at home. Obviously, they have that big win over North Carolina, uh, but outside of that, they've struggled in baseball. That'll do it up for us today. Thank you for listening, giving these updates. Thanks uh, for listening. Uh, inside the HBCU Sports Lab, make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Cabill. Dean of HBCU Sports coming from inside the lab in the College of HBCU Sports with Mike Watch and Charles Bishop. Again, thank you for listening to Dr. Ville's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watch, Charles Bishop every Tuesday and Thursday. Oftentimes, you'll see the clinical professor jumping in here, giving you his updates, and that is Professor Drew. But if you can't catch him here, you know you can catch him with Brian and AD of the Sports Wrap. That's Sunday and Wednesday as they give you the rundown of the week of HBCU Sports as well as on Wednesday to give you the special edition of what's going on in terms of the race uh, to the Black College World Series, which now has the title sponsor of Tyson. The Tyson heard. Black College World Series. World Series. <laughs> uh, sounds nice, great ring to it. But we look forward to you next week as we discuss the latest in the news. That's follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. Inside the HBCU Sports Lab 1 on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube is inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Like, share, and subscribe. Make sure, again, that you download the my JVN, uh, my BCSN app. We look forward to you as we continue to bring you the latest in the news. Dream big. Continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Drew? Of course. Roy? Lecture. Dismissed.